Hi everyone, I'm Laura Adams, better known as Money Girl, and the author of Money Girl Smart Moves to Grow Rich, available in paperback and ebook at your favorite bookseller. I'm glad you're back for another weekly edition. For exclusive tips and advice that you won't get in the weekly podcast, be sure to sign up for the free Money Girl newsletter at quickanddirtytips.com. That's where I answer a lot of listener questions that I don't get to address in the podcast. When you're on the site, go ahead and connect with me on social media. I'm on Facebook, Twitter, Google+. You can also read a transcript of this show, which is episode number 365, called Seven Investment Rules to Make Money. Many people shy away from investing money because they think it's too complicated or too risky. The truth, my friends, is that not investing for the future is one of the riskiest financial moves you can make. This episode was inspired by Eric Tyson, who shared 20 rules for successful investing with me. They're from his new book, Investing for Dummies, 7th Edition. We don't have time to cover all 20, but I'll highlight seven of my favorite investing rules from his list. People have invested money for thousands of years in many different ways. In a nutshell, investing is putting your money to work so it generates income, asset appreciation, or both, even while you sleep. For most people, earning an hourly wage or an annual salary isn't enough to have a secure future without investing some portion of it. Even if you're a really good saver and sock away piles of money in a bank savings account instead of investing, inflation, well, it's a party pooper. Inflation is the general increase in prices for goods and services. You've seen this throughout your lifetime, I'm sure. As prices go up, every dollar you have buys a smaller percentage of a good or service. For example, if the annual inflation rate is 3%, an item that cost $1 last year now costs $1.03. You can use an inflation calculator to see that something that cost $1 in 1994 now cost $1.61 in 2014, for example, that's a cumulative inflation rate over two decades of 61%. Ouch! Your after-tax savings must earn as much as the annual inflation rate, which typically ranges between 2 and 3%, just to maintain its purchasing power. To get ahead and build wealth, you've got to earn much more than the inflation rate. As you probably know, even the best bank savings or money market deposit accounts barely earn over 1% right now. Additionally, employer pensions are rare these days, and you simply can't count on the government to give you enough future benefits for a comfortable retirement. That's why investing for the long term is not a luxury. It's a financial necessity for everyone. When you have investments that are growing and increasing your net worth, They give you a sense of security and freedom. Having a strong financial safety net allows you to survive unexpected hardships and to thrive and take your life in any direction that you want to go. Follow these seven investing rules and you'll be set up to grow your money safely and have a happy financial future. Investing rule number one. Tyson says, saving is a prerequisite to investing. Unless you have wealthy, benevolent relatives, Living within your means and saving money are prerequisites to investing and building wealth. I couldn't agree more. What he's saying is that your first financial priority is to have a healthy emergency fund that can keep you safe no matter what. If you are not setting aside savings, ask yourself why. Maybe you need to cut back on frivolous spending, create a realistic spending plan, or get a second source of income. Investing rule number two, Tyson says, be realistic about expected returns. Over the long term, 9 to 10% per year is about right for ownership investments, such as stocks and real estate. If you run a small business, you can earn higher returns and even become a multimillionaire, but years of hard work and insight are required. So let me put this into real numbers for you. For example, let's say you begin investing $500 a month when you're 30 years old. If you earn an average return of 9%, you'll have nearly $1.5 million by your 65th birthday. At that same 9% return, you could invest $250 a month from age 25 to 65 
and amass over $1.1 million to spend in retirement. Investing rule number three. Tyson says, diversify. Diversification is a powerful investment concept that helps you reduce the risk of holding more aggressive investments. Diversifying simply means that you should hold a variety of investments that don't move in tandem in different market environments. For example, if you invest in stocks, invest worldwide, not just in the U.S. market. You can further diversify by investing in real estate. This is a great tip. Certainly the easiest way to diversify your investments is to own one or more low-cost mutual funds. They're managed by professionals who hold collections of assets, such as stocks, bonds, and cash, which gives you instant diversification. Investing rule number four. Tyson says, ignore the minutia. Don't feel mystified by or feel the need to follow the short-term gyrations of the financial markets. Ultimately, the price of stocks, bonds, and other financial instruments are determined by supply and demand, which are influenced by thousands of external issues and millions of investor expectations and fears. So he's right on the mark here. What happens to the financial markets in the short term only matters if you need to sell out or liquidate your investments in the short term. That's why you should never invest money that you might need to spend within the next five years. Instead, Make solid investments that will grow over the long term and never get rattled when you see volatility in the stock market. Investing rule number five. Tyson says, keep an eye on taxes. Take advantage of tax-deductible retirement accounts and understand the impact of your tax bracket when investing outside of tax-sheltered retirement accounts. Well, this is something that I preach all the time. Investing through a retirement account, such as an IRA or Workplace 401k, comes loaded with advantages. I've talked a lot about traditional accounts, which allow you to defer taxation until retirement. And then Roth options require tax on contributions, but allow tax-free withdrawals in retirement. And I've done lots of podcasts on IRAs that you can go back to for reference. Additionally, many employers offer retirement matching funds, which is free money that no eligible participant should turn down. Investing rule number six, Tyson says, you are what you read and listen to. Don't pollute your mind with bad investing strategies and philosophies. The quality of what you read and listen to is far more important than the quantity. That's why I'm glad you're reading or listening to the Money Girl podcast. It's so important to seek out good information, stay motivated, and to make small incremental progress toward achieving your financial goals. Few people achieve instant financial success. For most of us, building wealth is a slow journey that involves putting small amounts of money aside on a regular basis. It's really that simple. Investing rule number seven, Tyson says, Your personal life and health are the highest return, lowest risk investments. They're far more important than the size of your financial portfolio. Well, I couldn't agree more. If you have money but cannot enjoy it because you allowed your health or relationships to deteriorate, then it won't bring you much happiness. So consider health your first wealth and protect it fiercely by reducing stress, getting plenty of sleep and exercise. I'm glad you're listening. Cha-ching! That's all for now. Courtesy of Money Girl, your guide to a richer life. 